Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with my full review of the ZMF Atrium and I do want to say I'm sorry it took so long to get this out. I actually did my first impressions video almost two and a half months ago but um, this came in in the middle of March which um, if you've been following my videos you probably know that I um, own and run a small lawn care business and April, May, and June is pretty much my busiest time of the year and I've got to work as much as I can and make as much money as I can during that time to get through the rest of the year so I kind of have to set the uh, reviews and the videos aside a little bit sometimes or it's not that I want to but you know after working all day I'm just too tired to you know come in and and uh, put a whole lot of time into putting together my notes and all that so I've been meaning to get this out for a couple weeks now and to be honest the other reason is is I really like this headphone this is one of the best headphones I've ever heard and when I really like something when I like a headphone as much as I do this one I want to really take my time and be really thorough with my review and you know do the best I can of describing the sound and also doing comparisons to other headphones and trying different amps and you know finding out what works best and all that so I will be honest you know I put a lot of time into this and um, you know in fact my notes got so long that I think I'm going to try to shoot this video in probably three segments. Um, you know, some I do one, some I do two, but this one, I just got a lot to say, and I'm not going to divide this up into three different videos. I'm going to do one, but I'll probably shoot it in three parts and then cram it all together and make one video out of it. But anyway, this is the ZMF Atrium, and this was loaned to me for review by Zach from ZMF. And this currently sells for the base pr price is 2499 US dollars. And there is also a deluxe version, which this happens to be. And this one sells for $26.99. And I'll explain the difference in a few minutes. Anyway, this is a wired, full-size, over-the-ear, open-back headphone. It uses dynamic drivers made of biocellulose and um, it has an impedance of 300 ohms and a sensitivity of 96 decibels at 1 milliwatt. Um, this is a high, what would be considered a high impedance headphone, but it is fairly easy to drive. I mean, it's not super easy, but it actually takes quite a bit less power than a lot of your planar magnetic headphones like say the Hi-Fi Man, Sundara, things like this. Um, if you're familiar with Kennerton headphones, their planar headphones are actually very easy to drive for planers and this isn't about the same ballpark as far as power. Um, obviously you want to hook this up to a nice amp but you, it doesn't require a whole lot of power, a lower powered amp. In fact um, OTL type 2 amps work exceptionally well with this and most of those don't put out a whole lot of power but at um, some point in this video I'm going to talk about that too you know the difference how this sounds using either solid state amps or tube amps and then there's two I've got two different types of tube amps to review this I've got an OTL actually two OTL type 2 amps and one um, transformer coupled tube amp and um, I, but actually I've got a couple of real nice solid state amps that this actually sounds really good with so um, but I do think that the OTL tube amps are the way to go with this it just seems to give it a little bit more richer um, smoother sound a little more um, three-dimensional sound stage but I'll talk about that more at some later point in this video anyway um, in my first impressions video I talked about the weight of this and I believe at that time ZMF gave a weight and this was pretty much pre-production when I did my first impressions I actually 
This headphone became available to the public on April 1st and I actually did my video about a week before this on the day that this was announced to the public. Uh, this unit, in fact, it does say uh, somewhere on it, it says loaner or uh, review model on it, so this doesn't even have a serial number. But anyway, um, one thing I did mention at that time was I think ZMF had the weight listed at 460 grams, and when I weighed this on my scale, it came in at 521 grams, quite a bit heavier. Um, I thought that maybe this does have the copper grills, that might have been the reason, and that turns out to be the truth. That is the reason. Now ZMF is listing the weight at 490 grams plus or minus 30 grams. And <clears throat> the plus 30 grams would be this version. This version has the aged cherry ear cups and it does have the copper grills. And apparently the copper grills compared to the aluminum grills add 30 grams of weight to it. Um, the standard version of this, the one that sells for $24.99, uses cherry wood and it has black aluminum grills where this one uses aged cherry and the grills and the post. Right here you can see these are the rods. Um, those are copper and that does add a little bit of weight. So, um, 521 grams, not, definitely not a light headphone. It is one of the heavier headphones I've reviewed, but it is surprisingly comfortable. And um, I'll talk about that a little bit too. But anyway, um, there is another option with this headphone. You can get it with a magnesium chassis. And I believe that would be this framework up here, the headband, possibly. I'm not sure about the yokes. But anyway, that does reduce the weight by 34 grams. But it is a $250 option to get it that way. So um, anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about what this headphone comes with, what is included. And then I'll give you a closer look at it. First of all, it comes with two cables. And the first one I've got here, this is uh, about six feet long. It's got a rubber coating, has a 6.3 millimeter or a quarter inch uh, connection at the amp end and then at the headphone and it uses your four pin mini XLRs. And then it actually uh, comes with a nicer cable. This one is a cloth covered braided cable and this one has a four pin full size XLR plug at the amp end and then once again it has your uh, four pin mini XLRs at the headphone end and from looking at ZMF's website it looks like you've got some choices as far as cables as far as what connection you want at the amp end and uh, I think it comes standard with two cables, but I think you have uh, some different choices you can make to uh, <clears throat> match up better with your equipment. Anyway, um, it also, my, this review unit came with two sets of extra ear pads. The stock pads on it are the Universe pads, and then it also came with these. These are the BE2 lambskin perforated pads. And then um, it came with these, which are the, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's actually the name of one of their headphones that I haven't reviewed. The uh, Atour, At Atour, I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, uh, these are also lambskin pads, and I think they both um, also have a suede option. But my understanding is you get the headphone come stock with the Universe pads, which is sort of the middle of the road as far as the sound. And then you have a choice of one other set of pads. I did, um, when I did my first impressions, I hadn't yet tried these other ear pads on the headphone. But I have since then, and they do make a difference. Um, not a huge difference, but they do make a difference in the sound. The BE2 
uh, lambskins make the uh, headphone a little bit a uh, little bit slightly brighter a little bit more towards neutral still has real good bass and sub bass um, but maybe possibly a little bit more detail where the uh, Atur uh, pads once again sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong um, these give the headphone a little bit warmer a little more bassy sound a little closer to the ZMF Verite Open which I reviewed uh, last year which is also a headphone I really like um, at first I had a little bit of a hard time getting used to the Verite Open because it um, had an unusual sound stage and um, it it, it didn't really excel at any one thing. It wasn't the most detailed headphone I had ever heard. It had sort of a narrow sound stage, but a very uh, unique, very, very deep sound stage where it actually puts sounds all the way from out in front of me, all the way around the back. And uh, this headphone is uh, definitely diff different from the Verite Open. I don't have that here to compare directly. Uh, the Verite Open was loaned to me by one of my listeners and um, the more I listened to it, the more I liked it. And by the time I had to return that headphone, I loved it and it was very hard to return. And uh, this headphone is a little bit different. It um, I would say it's a little closer to neutral, a little less bass weight to it, but a more forward mid-range, a little, I think this is actually a little more detailed than the uh, Verte Open was, but the biggest difference is this has a more conventional sound stage. It still has some pretty decent depth, but, and it's still occasionally, there's been a few times that I swear I've heard sounds come from behind my head and turned around and looked thought someone was in the room with me but um, it has a lot wider sound stage than the um, Verte opened it it's uh, out much wider in fact this has one of the widest sound stages of any headphone I've heard I mean it's up there similar like the uh, versions 1 and 2 of the Hi-Fi Man uh, uh, Aria which is known to have a really wide sound stage and <clears throat> Also, uh, the Urzatish Urza Phobos had a really large sound stage, and this is similar. I mean, this just has a huge amount of width, really good depth, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, I'm not even into the sound of this yet. So, anyway, but yeah, um, the more I listen to this headphone, I mean, I liked it right out of the box, but the more I listen to it, the more I'm like, I mean, I just love this headphone. And once again, this is going to be really hard to return. Uh, maybe even harder than the other. I did want to also show you this. This headphone comes with a really nice case. Um, I've been, my headphones that I've bought, I've um, bought some nice hard cases from Harbor Freight, but this is definitely nicer yet. Uh, this has locks on both sides. You can turn these and lock them. And uh, this is filled with uh, foam padding inside. Very durable. I could probably stand on this and not hurt the headphones. But anyway, um, the Verity. Verite open and this come with it come with the same case, but um, the nicest case I've seen any headphone come in so far. So anyway, um, I want to move in here and give you a look closer look at these headphones. And first, I just wanted to point out this is a beautiful headphone. Uh, the material and build quality is exceptional. I don't see any flaws anywhere. This is a real solid um, wood ear cup on it. This isn't a veneer or anything like that. This is machined from a solid chunk of, and this happens to be aged cherry with, I think it's, this is considered a matte finish on it. And then the grills on this and the post are actually copper, which, um, like I said, this is a $200 upgrade and it does add a little bit of weight. Oh, I, I did want to mention, I was going to mention this earlier, please forgive uh, the fan behind me, the sound from that and the air conditioner, but it was, we had a heat index of 104 here today, so in, in my uh, office here is up in the loft and it's pretty warm up here and I've got to keep this stuff running, so please forgive me for the noise, but anyway, getting back to the headphone, 
Um, this has got lambskin leather for the uh, pad, um, the head pad and the ear pads and these are the universe pads. You can see they're tapered, they're wider in the back and um, they have sort of an oval inside to them but plenty of room for my ears. They're, the leather is, uh, this is lambskin leather and it's very very soft and the foam inside I'm assuming is uh, memory foam. Usually the way I can tell the difference is memory foam. If you push it in, it returns slower, normal. Cheaper foams pop back out real fast. And um, I did want to mention the ear pads too. I've had to be careful about keeping those separated and organized because the three different sets of ear pads I have, they're very hard to tell apart. They, um, they're all the same size basically. They're all perforated. They're all the same material. Um, I did notice um, two of them have a round hole and this one has sort of an oval so that's one way to tell the difference. And I think um, the BE2s I think have slightly larger holes but they are very hard to tell apart so I have to be careful and not mix them up. But anyway, um, you can see the yolks swivel like this. They uh, swivel this way and your posts move up and down and um, they're secure they stay where you put them and this is just um, like I said it's a heavy headphone oh I did want to point out you got your four pin um, XLR your four pin mini XLR plugs on your ear cups and that's what most high-end headphones are going with now some are still using 3.5 millimeter but um, I actually prefer the 4 pin XLR I've never had problems with any of those but uh, but getting back to the weight um, at 521 grams this is one of the heavier headphones I've reviewed I've re done a couple of them up in the 600 gram range uh, I know the Kennerton Odin was up there I think 600 maybe even heavier and I think the Urzatish Phobos was up there but um, and both of those were really pretty comfortable headphones. I myself don't have an issue with weight and um, did want to um, show you that there's actually very little clamping force and these are very comfortable but there's enough they don't move I don't worry about if I tip my head them falling off or anything and um, they are large the weight is spread out and um, but the ear pads are just incredibly soft and comfortable and even though it is pretty heavy this is one of the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn I mean I can I've listened to these for two three hours at a time and have no physical discomfort at all um, one problem I do occasionally have is um, I've had issues with TMJ in my jaw here and the thing that bothers me is headphones that clamp too hard and after like an hour I can start um, getting pain in my jaw and around the front of my ear and all that and that actually bothers me more than weight. I mean weight has never been an issue. I've got a pretty thick neck. Um, maybe that's part of it. I mean, I've heard people complain about 400 pound, or 400 gram headphones being too heavy, and it just, like I said, it's just nothing. Something that's never bothered me, but I know it does. It is important to some people. So this is sort of heavy, but I find it extremely comfortable. It's just, it's something about these ear pads. I mean, it's just something about this. It's just, it's spread out over a large area. There's not much clamping force. But I mean, it just, it, 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 it actually, and I've never said this about another headphone, it actually gives me a feeling of like, almost like security and safety. I just feel, it, it almost feels like a hug, like a hug from my mom or something, you know. I mean, I know that sounds crazy. I've never said that before, but it's just something about putting these on. It just... It just makes me feel safe and secure. Um, <laughs> I don't know from what, but anyway, I guess I'm pretty safe here in my house. But anyway, is this a really good feeling? It just, it's like, you know, on a cold winter night wrapping up in a big blanket or something. It's kind of like that feeling. So anyway, um, 
the comfort is really good even though it's kind of heavy the build quality the materials everything is outstanding like I said earlier I did this video I'm gonna do this in three segments so I'm gonna jump now to the second segment where I'm gonna talk about the equipment that I used in reviewing this and then the third segment of this video will be talking about the actual sound and doing some comparisons to some other headphones that I did um, you know I've had the chance to compare this to directly I did I've in my first video I kind of compared it to the Verite Open which I don't have to compare directly but I have a lot of notes and I have some of the headphones that I did uh, compare to the Verite so I've got kind of an idea how it sounded and I'll go into that a little bit but I also um, picked some other headphones that um, close in price, close in performance, you know, I, I used what I had to use so I'll talk about that in the next segment and um, I guess I'll get to that now. This is the second part of my full review of the ZMF Atrium and before I get, before I really start talking about the sound I wanted to mention the type of music I use and the equipment I use during my review. Um, as far as music, I use sort of a mixture of different types of rock, some pop, some electronic, uh, a lot of acoustic music, um, definitely with female vocals. Female vocals really tell me how a headphone sounds as far as if it sounds real or not. Um, acoustical instruments too, guitars, pianos, things like that. But the female voice is just very hard to produce in a way that sounds real. And, um, you know, that really defines the headphone, tells me if it's reproducing sound in a organic, real, natural way. Um, as far as my test equipment, uh, most of my, my source was mainly CDs from a Cambridge Audio CD transport using the digital output and um, I used a few different decks during this review. I used the Topping E30, the uh, Topping D70S, that would be the MQA version, the Audio GD R8 MK2, which is an R2R deck, and the Denifrips Pontus 2, which is another R2R deck, and unfortunately I don't have the Pontus 2 anymore. It was on loan and I did have to return that. So um, I'm hoping that sometime in the near future, the Denifrip sends me another DAC or possibly their headphone amp to review because I really enjoyed my time with the Pontus 2. Uh, definitely, probably my favorite DAC that I've reviewed up to this point, but the Audio GD R8. MK2, which you see up in the top corner up there, uh, stacked with the Master 9, is very close. Um, so those two are, I'm, uh, I guess my uh, taste in equipment and headphones and all that has kind of changed a little bit over the four years I've been doing reviews at first. I was basically just looking for the ultimate in detail. I just wanted to hear every last detail in every recording and that seemed to be the most important thing to me where lately, uh, the last year or so, I've kind of adjusted where I like um, a little more warmth, a little more uh, of a liquid sound. I've gotten into R2R decks. I really like the way they sound. I think they're a little bit more organic or real sounding than the uh, Delta Sigma chip decks. And I've also gotten into tube amps, um, OTL tube amps and transformer coupled tube amps. And uh, as you can see, I've got a few behind me right now. Actually, I've got a couple of duplicates there because I'm comparing some older models to some newer models. I'll point it out here. I've got, uh, this is from Waveborn. This is their... Preamp Plus, which is an OTL type tube amp, and the Power Amp Plus, which is a transformer coupled. And these are the older versions from last year, and above them are the newer versions from this year. And I'm actually 
comparing the two, comparing the two preamp pluses and the two power amp pluses and uh, doing some videos on that and trying to, um, I guess Waveborn actually values my opinion on um, how they sound. So anyway, um, as far as amps, I've uh, tried several amps with the ZMF uh, Atrium. I wanted to find out what, you know, what, this is a headphone that definitely scales with a better amp it sounds better so but I wanted to find out what it required it doesn't need a whole lot of power and can sound decent with even a low cost amp so uh, during the last two and a half months that I've had this I've uh, tried the iFi Zendek and uh, that would be the original version from um, like a year and a half ago that sold for like 129 and then right now I currently have the uh, Zen 1 Signature and Zen Can Signature Stack and uh, that's sitting out at my desk where I normally do my reviews I just decided to do something a little bit different tonight and uh, do my review in here by my equipment rack so anyway or this segment of the review anyway I also use the Burson Conductor uh, 3 reference which has its own built-in DAC a really good one and then the Audio GD Master 9 which you can see once again up there in the top corner stacked with the R8 um, MK2 DAC and then um, also the Burson Audio, or um, no, I'm sorry, the Felix Audio Echo, which is another OTL tube amp. And I think you can see it over here right behind the uh, atrium sitting there. And um, here, once again, another view of the atrium. And then I'll get back in a few minutes to um, my third part of this review. But anyway, uh, the headphones that I used in my comparison were primarily the Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth, uh, the Kennerton Odin, which is actually a very similar sounding headphone. I'm surprised by how close it is to these in many ways. And these are all three headphones that I really like. And uh, the Hi-Fi Man's a little cheaper. The Odin, um, I believe, is discontinued, but I, or, uh, Kennerton does make some similar models. and. That was pretty close to the same price. And then the third headphone I compared the uh, Atrium to is what has probably been my favorite headphone for the last several months, and that would be the Kennerton Ragnar, and that's the planar version. And then um, as far as ear pads, I told you or I mentioned earlier that they um, ZMF sent three sets of ear pads with this, and the one that it comes with is the uh, universe which is kind of in the middle of the three and I actually settled back I tried the others and I settled back with the universe I like that the sound the best with the universe pads it's kind of in the middle and it's kind of just a really good balance um, the BE2 which were the lambskin perforated versions um, gave me wasn't a huge difference that that was a smaller difference it, it just made it slightly brighter maybe a little bit more mid-range detail um, a little bit of a um, a little less warmth to the mid-range that's why it might have sounded a little bit more detailed but um, I actually prefer the universe the warmer sound and um, just um, slightly less bass, but still good bass. But I'd, I would say the three ear pads, I liked those the least. And then um, the third set, the Autour, if I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry if I'm not. Um, anyway, I thought about watching some other people's videos to um, see how they pronounced it. But um, usually don't do that. I don't... Not that I don't value or like the videos of other people, I just don't, it's hard to not watch other videos, or it's hard to watch other videos and then not incorporate their opinions into your opinions and use them for yourself. So, you know, I like to just listen to it and give my opinion, and if anyone agrees, I guess I'm happy if they don't. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm honest, I tell you what I hear, so... 
anyway and um, the auteur pads um, made the headphone a little bit warmer a little bit bassier and I would say a little more euphoric and I really did like it it was really enjoyable but I think I was losing a little bit of detail in the mid-range and just a little bit too warm and um, so I really really liked it and it was hard for me to decide but I eventually went back to the universe pads as the best balance of you know the three of them I just like that sound the most and so for my comparisons which are coming up next well I'll obviously talk about the sound of this headphone and then do some comparisons to the three headphones that I mentioned a minute ago and that'll be my third part of this video so um, but I'm not going to try to do all three I did that with the um, Kenerton Ragnar I compared it the headphone with all three different ear pads two different headphones and the video ended up being like over 50 minutes long and I'm trying to keep this one a little bit shorter although this one might end up that long too but anyway um so i settled in on the universe and i'm using those pads to do my comparison so now um, i'll take you back to the third part of my video talk about the sound and how this headphone compares to the other three that i mentioned hi everyone i'm here uh with the third part of this video and uh this might actually go to four parts. I've just pretty much um, had too much to say about this headphone to put all my notes in one spot. and I've um, actually done this over two days. That's the reason for the different uh, color shirt than I was wearing in the first part of this video. So I'm going to try to get into the sound of this headphone. And I want to apologize once again that you probably hear the fan in the background and maybe the air conditioning but um, we had a temperature of 98 degrees today and a heat index of 108 and I worked outside in that for a few hours this, this evening and um, I need the air conditioning and a fan going or I'm gonna sit here and sweat I mean, no one wants to see that so anyway getting into the sound of the atrium um, I guess I'm just going to start by saying that overall the tone balance, the sound of this headphone is on the warm and bassy side of neutral. This, it's not real far from neutral, but, um, I mean this is a pretty accurate headphone, but it is, the mid-range especially is a little on the warm side and it does have a little bit of emphasis in the bass compared to what I would call a neutral headphone. Uh, the extension on both ends is excellent in my opinion. The sub bass extension it goes very low and the treble extension is just about right in my opinion. I wouldn't call it bright, I wouldn't call it dark. It's just right there in the middle somewhere and um, you know it goes as high as I can hear and you know I, I'm just really happy with the trouble with this headphone it's just um, well I'll talk about that more in a second anyway um, I'm gonna start with the sub bass the sub bass on this headphone is among the best I've heard of any headphones that I've reviewed so far it goes deep it has a lot of weight it has substance but it also has detail and texture to it which a lot of headphones just they might go deep but they just don't have that detail you know all the notes sound the same but this you can you know just subtle little differences in the sub bass you can hear it with this headphone so um, excellent sub bass the mid bass I would say is very good uh, once again it has some weight to it it has some impact to it it's a little bit emphasized above neutral and that also depends on the pads you use and I mentioned earlier in this review that I settled in on the universe pads which are what comes stock on this universe uh, lambskin perforated 
and that's the pad I like the best, the best overall balance, and like I said, the base does have a little bit of emphasis to it, but um, it's well controlled. Not the absolute last word in tightness, but it is well controlled and very pleasant and um, just very enjoyable. Uh, the mids on this headphone, and that's where the part of this headphone that I really, really like is the mids. They're just, um, they're warm, they're rich, they're liquid. Um, I would even call it lush. Um, it, it's one of those headphones... I mentioned earlier in my review that I've kind of gone from originally preferring things that were super detailed, almost analytical sound, where now it's more musicality that um, attracts me that is what I'm looking for. Just um, This headphone just makes beautiful music. That's all there is to it. The mids are just, just beautiful to listen to. And th that is part of why this headphone to me is addictive to listen to. I just want to listen to it. I want to get drag out every CD I have. I have maybe 500 of them and I want to just keep pulling out old CDs that I haven't even listened to in years just to sound, hear how good they sound on this headphone. The treble, uh, like I said, is just right in my opinion. It's clean, it's crisp, it has good sparkle, but yet it doesn't, it never sounds too bright, but it never sounds lacking. It never sounds dark either. And um, it never sounds harsh, and it never sounds sibilant. I haven't heard any, not even the slightest hint of sibilance out of this headphone ever. No matter what I'm listening to, even if it's not the best recording. Um, detail and resolution. This headphone isn't the absolute last word in detail and resolution, but it's still excellent. It's up there towards the top. I mean, it's still one of the best I've heard. It's, um, it's very, very good, the detail and resolution of this headphone. Um, there's a few headphones out there that out detail it a little bit, but they can tend to sound analytical at times where this one does not so it's a very good compromise between you know going too far and sounding analytical but but lacking detail and i never feel that this headphone lacks detail um, but like i said it doesn't sound analytical either it's just a really good balance in my opinion the sound stage this headphone has an outstanding head or sound stage. It is up there with the very best I've heard. Um, some of the headphones that I think have an outstanding sound stage would be the uh, Hi-Fi Hi Man Aria, the versions one and two. Not so much the Stealth version. Stealth version has a pretty small, pretty narrow sound stage. But the uh, and I haven't actually heard the second, the, the version 2, but I did review the version 1, and I heard the version 2 is pretty much the same. So anyway, had a super wide sound stage. This is very similar to that. I don't have the original Aria to compare it directly, but from my memory, this has um, close to the width of the Aria, but more depth. The Aria just does not have a lot of depth, neither the first one or the Stealth, and this has a lot of depth to the soundstage. A couple other headphones that I was really impressed by the soundstage was the Urgetish Phobos, um, which possibly had the largest, most open soundstage I've heard, and the Kenerton Thoreau has exceptional depth to the soundstage, also good width. So this is right up there with the best, and these are all, you know, pretty high-end headphones. Um, this, like I said, uh, the original, uh, or not the original, the uh, Verite Open that I reviewed about a year ago had an unusual soundstage. It was kind of narrow, but had exceptional depth where it even went, I heard sounds behind my head. This is more normal. It, it has a lot more width than the Verite Open, but not quite as much depth. But I still occasionally think I hear things behind my head when I listen to this. Um, imaging. 
Very good imaging, very good separation between in instruments and voices, but um, it's not the absolute last word and preciseness. I mean, it's not as pinpoint as a couple other headphones I've listened to, but it's very, very good. Um, you can locate exactly where every instrument is coming from. And once again, um, it has a large sound stage and a lot of depth with layering. So you can not only uh, pinpoint where the instrument is coming from, but you can also tell how far away it is, you know, whether it's uh, up real close or at some distance. Uh, dynamics, I would say this headphone is kind of down the middle. It's not super dynamic, but super dynamic can become fatiguing. It, but it's not what I would consider soft either. It's just kind of down the middle, real good balance, and uh, because of that you can listen to this a long time without getting fatigued. Uh, forgiveness, and by that what I mean is this forgiving, forgiving of less than perfect recordings. And, excuse me, I would say yes, very much so. This is a very forgiving headphone. Because of the warm, rich mid-range, um, little flaws and recordings don't jump out at you. And this is a headphone that you can listen to just about every recording you have, even if it's not perfect. Just pretty much everything sounds good on this headphone. Uh, female vocals, which is, um, to me, one of the best tests of a headphone, whether it sounds natural or not, if it sounds real. And this headphone, once again, is up there with the best. Um, some of the headphones I really like for female vocals, um, the Verite Open was excellent, but also the Kennerton Odin, I think was my favorite of all the Kennertons. Uh, the Thrower is really good too. But anyway, this is right up there with some of the best as far as making a female, female vocal sound natural and real and organic. Just love the way female vocals sound in this headphone. They can, um, they, they just sound warm, they sound smooth, they sound, sound liquid, and at times it actually makes um, some female vocals, it gives them an almost seductive sound. You know, just, um, just, I really, really like it. This headphone, like I said, is up there with the very best as far as female vocals. Uh, fatigue, um, as far as listening fatigue, very, very low. Uh, this headphone never sounds harsh, never sounds sibilant. It's not overly dynamic where it wears you out. It's not too bright. Uh, the bass isn't overdone to the point that can wear you out also. Just, you know, over too hot a bass and a headphone can wear you out for a while. So. Listening fatigue is very, very low. Excuse me a second. Worked out in the heat today and have to rehydrate a little bit here. Um, anyway, uh, and comfort wise, this headphone is at 521 grams, is a little on the heavy side. But I have not at any time felt fatigue wearing this. I just, I can wear this for a couple hours at a time. And no, I mean, I've never done like an all day or all night listening session, but I just don't have the time to do that. I work too much. Um, but the times I've had to listen to this for a couple hours at a time, I've just never had any discomfort. There's very little, um, clamping force on it, but yet it feels secure, doesn't move around. I don't worry if I fall asleep while listening to it, if I lean forward that it's going to fall off or anything like that. So um, very, very comfortable both comfort wise and just does not wear my ears out to listen to it. Does this headphone have any weaknesses? It has a, a few very small weaknesses. This is of any headphone I've ever reviewed, there is this probably is among the best or has the least weaknesses. I mean, almost every headphone has a weakness of some sort. And all I can come up with on this one is it's not the absolute last word in detail, but yet it's very good 
it, it has excellent detail and um, it's not the absolute last word in bass control. The bass can get just a little out of control at times depending on the recording. It's not the absolute tightest bass I've ever heard but it's still excellent. It sounds very very good. So I really can't come up with any solid complaints or weaknesses of this headphone. Uh, the strengths it's just this headphone is one of the best overall most well balanced headphone I've ever heard. Um, pretty much everything I put into this headphone sounds good even if it's a less than perfect recording and the honest truth is this headphone I find it addictive I just wanna I wish I could just sit and listen to it all night I have to force myself to take my headphone off and go to bed so I can get some sleep and go to work the next day but I want I wish and I haven't had the time to do this I wish I could just spend hours listening to this headphone just pulling out old recordings and you know just listen till I can't listen anymore and but it doesn't wear me out so that's not gonna happen it's just my time limit is what limits my um, listening to this headphone so um, I'm going to take another quick break, be right back, and I'm going to talk about what amps I found work the best with this headphone, and I'm going to give you a comparison to the Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth, the Kennerton Odin, and this will be the 2019 version, and the Kennerton Ragnar, and um, then I'm going to wrap up this video, but I know it's getting long, but to be honest, if I was going to buy a $25 or $2,700 headphone, I would want to know absolutely everything I could find out about it before I invested that much money. I mean, that's a huge amount of money to me. I know some people that's a couple days pay, but for me, you know, that's like a month's pay and I have to work hard for that money and so... I would want to know everything about this headphone that I could possibly know so that's the reason I do these long detailed videos I know some people don't like it but that's just what I do you can find plenty of short detail you know short quick to the point videos but that's just not the way I do it so anyway I'll be back in a minute with the rest of this video okay let's talk about amps I tried the ZMF Atrium with several different amps and uh, most of them did a pretty good job. This headphone isn't especially amp picky but it does scale up with better amps. It does sound better. So I'm going to start at uh, the least expensive amp I tried this with and that would be the iFi Zen DAC, which is a combination amp DAC and this would be the original that sold for about $129 and it does sound decent but I will be honest with you that amp DAC combination is not worthy of this headphone it does not bring out the best that this headphone is capable of you can listen to it and it does sound pretty good but this headphone deserves something better so moving up to the iFi uh, Zen 1 Signature and Zen DAC Signature stack, which um, you should be able to see behind me on the shelf here, those um, we're looking at more money, looking at $299 a piece. That's a $600 stack, and those do a pretty good job. Uh, the amp has enough power, it's a good DAC. They actually make this headphone sound pretty good. Uh, does it take it as far as it could go? No but it takes you like 90% of the way there. They do a, um, this headphone, like I said, um, it's got a lot of potential that doesn't quite get you all the way there, but it will get you close. Um, next, I tried um, the Singzer SA1, which is about, a, what does that sell for? Is that four and five ninety nine? I think it's a $599 headphone amp. Um, in combination with the Topping D70S, that would be the MQA version, as a DAC, 
And those do a really good job. Um, this headphone sounds really good with that combination. But you got to make sure that the Singer SA1 is on high gain and you have to set the um, impedance switch to high impedance. And then this headphone does sound good. That'll take you about 95% of the way there. The Felix Audio Echo, which is an OTL tube amp, and um, I think it still sells for under a thousand dollars. This headphone sounds excellent with that. Is it the absolute best? Um, pr probably not. I mean, there's you know other amps out there, higher end amps. Felix Audio has higher end, all that. But this headphone, if your budget is under a thousand dollars for an amp, that is the amp I would recommend. It's an OTL type. OTL tube amps work great with high impedance headphones. And I tried it with the uh, Verite Open and with the Atrium, and that amp works really well with both. It makes it sound excellent. Um, tried the Burson Conductor 3 Reference, which is a combination amp DAC combo, and um, it sounds really good. It uh, for a solid state amp, it has a really good sound. It's uh, Class A, <clears throat> has pretty good warmth, it's got a good DAC in it. It's also a good combination, sounds excellent with this headphone. Um, <clears throat> even better, um, I've got the Audio GD uh, Master 9 amp and Audio GD R8 MK2 DAC stack. And this headphone sounds incredible with that stack. I think a part of it is the R2R DAC. Just gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional sound stage, but um, and it's also a pure class A amp um, with plenty of power, more, enough power for any headphone. Anyway, but that's about a four thousand dollar stack. But this headphone, uh, as far as any solid state amps that I tried, that is the best that I've heard. This headphone, um, Audio GD Master Nine and R8 MK2 uh, stack just uh, really brings out the detail and like I said it's, it gives it a really expansive sound stage with a lot of layering and dimension to it and then um, probably the best I heard this headphone was with the Waveborn Edelweiss 3 preamp plus which is an OTL type 2 amp and um, this headphone just sounds outstanding with that amp. Just um, warm, rich, lush, and just a really uh, expansive three-dimensional soundstage. Love this with that amp. And then I also tried it with the Power Amp Plus, also from Waveborn, which is a transformer coupled amp uh, compared to the Preamp Plus, which is an OTL type. It sounds really good with that too. Maybe even a bigger sound stage, but um, just not qu quite as rich. Uh, the OTL amps just really match well with the high impedance headphones. Um, and then getting into the headphones I compared this to, I'm going to start with the Aria Stealth, which currently sells for about $12.99. So it's, um, you know, significantly, it's actually about half the price of this. And in my opinion, an outstanding headphone for the price. Uh, comparing the two, I went side by side. And if you haven't heard the Stealth, you've got to know that the Stealth sounds not at all like the original version one or the version two. The Stealth has a very different sound, much, uh, much better bass a much richer mid-range, a lot different. So if you haven't heard the Stealth, um, that you can't compare what I'm saying to the original Aria. But anyway, the Stealth. Comparing the two, the sub-bass, um, very similar in weight and extension. Um, the Aria is just a little bit more punchy, a little bit more dynamic. Uh, mid-bass, same thing, very similar in weight um, and the, but the Aria does is once again a little bit more dynamic. The original Aria, the one, the version one and version two, had sort of a soft sound, but the stealth version is actually very dynamic and very punchy. Uh, mids, the atrium's a little warmer, um, a little richer, 
And um, that's saying a lot because the Stealth actually has a much warmer, richer mid-range than the original Aria, but the Atrium is even more so, and to me just has a more real and natural sound. Uh, detail, the Aria Stealth, Stealth is extremely detailed, almost to the point of being analytical, and it, I give the edge and detail to the Aria. It does out-detail this headphone, but can sound a little analytical when comparing it to the atrium. If it, I don't notice it, but when I jump back to the atrium, or no, if I've been listening to the atrium, then go to the Aria Stealth. It just sounds kind of analytical to me. Um, sound stage, the um, Aria Stealth does not have the sound stage with that the original or the version 2 had. So the Atrium easily beats out the St Aria Stealth in sound stage width. It's probably twice as wide and it easily beats out the Aria in depth of the sound stage in uh, three dimensional, you know, um, the layering and all that much, much better on the Atrium than the Stealth. Where the Stealth does beat out the Atrium, it's got a lot of height to the sound stage because of the real tall ear cups. So you do get a lot of sound up real high where this doesn't reach that high. But this, I sometimes, uh, the Atrium, I hear sounds around behind me. I've never heard that with the Aria, with any of the Arias. Hi-Fi Man headphones, the ones I've heard, just don't have a whole lot of depth to the sound stage. Uh, Comfort-wise, the Aria is lighter, but I actually find the Atrium more comfortable. And I'll show you why I find the Atrium more comfortable. This here is the Aria Stealth, and it has really tall ear cups, and the ear cups let, end up, if I wear it too high, it makes the sound stage real tall and narrow. So if I lower it down, it gives it a better sound stage but it's actually kind of uncomfortable for me because it comes down all the way down to the bottom of my jaw and it just I guess I could probably get used to that if I wore it all the time but when I put this on I just find that kind of uncomfortable so even though the Aria is very comfortable and it is actually lighter I actually find uh, the Atrium to be more comfortable for me uh, just softer ear pads and just more even pressure and not down real low on my jaw. Um, imaging. Uh, the Aria is a little bit more precise than the Atrium. Power, they both need about the same amount of power. The Aria has a lower impedance but is less efficient. They're both um, just average. They need an average amp. They don't need a huge amount of power, but they do need some power, you know, more than like a phone or something. Uh, the Aria has a little bit cleaner, crisper sound to it, but the Atrium, in my opinion, is more musical and just has a better, more pleasant, more enjoyable overall sound. I there's no doubt in my mind that the, the Aria is a great headphone, especially for the price, but if I had to choose between the two, I would pick the Atrium in a second. Um, I'm going to take another break and get right back with the comparison to the Kennerton Odin and the Kennerton uh, Ragnar Planar version. Okay, I'm back with the final part of this review, and sorry I've had to take so many breaks, but I've worked hard in the heat today, and it's hot in my house, and oh, just um, it's so much to say about this headphone. So anyway, um, I want to do two more comparisons, and then I'm going to wrap this video up. The first, um, I'm going to compare the um, Atrium to this headphone which is the Kennerton Odin and this is the 2019 version and this has been discontinued um, it's been replaced with a few other headphones I'm not sure if they sound how similar they sound I haven't heard all the Kennertons but um, this headphone I think probably the biggest reason it was discontinued because of the weight I think this weighs over 600 grams but it's actually surprisingly comfortable 
But the reason I'm comparing this is because this headphone actually has a very similar sound to the Atrium. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but it's hard to find two headphones that sound as similar as this in the Atrium. Uh, this headphone originally, or I think was selling for about $2,200 a couple of years ago when it was still available. Um, so I went through and I compared the two, and like I said, the sound is very, very close. But the differences are uh, the sub bass, the Atrium goes a little bit lower than the Odin does. It extends a little further. The mid bass, the Atrium has a little bit more weight, and uh, but the Odin is a little bit tighter in the mid bass and a little bit better controlled. Uh, the mids, the Odin is warm, rich, and beautiful. The Atrium is even more so. Um, they're both uh, female vocals. The Odin um, is probably, has for a long time, been my absolute favorite headphone as far as female vocals. Just makes them sound rich and just so smooth and so beautiful but yet so detailed and the atrium is right up there with the odin as far as female vocals the treble um the odin extends a little bit higher into the frequencies and um sounds a little bit brighter has a little bit more sparkle not to say the atrium is dark at all the atrium is probably about average and the Odin is a little bit on the bright side of average. Uh, detail wise, I'd say I give a slight advantage to the Odin. It is a, brings out just a little bit more detail than the Atrium. Probably, um, well, anywhere from the mid bass all the way to probably the treble. It's just slightly more detail from the Odin. Uh, Sound stage. They actually are very similar uh, as far as width. I'd say I'd give just a slight advantage to the Atrium in width. The Odin has a very large soundstage, very open sounding. The Atrium possibly just a little bit more width, but the Atrium does have more depth to the soundstage than the Odin. The Odin's good, but the Atrium is even better at the depth. Um, imaging, I would say the Odin is a little more precise and a little bit more pinpoint than the Atrium is. Dynamics, uh, the Odin is a little more dynamic and a little more punchy than the Atrium. Comfort, um, I have to give that one to the Atrium. Even though the Odin is very comfortable in my opinion, the Atrium is about 100 grams lighter, and the Atrium does have softer pads, so um, I'd give a not a huge advantage. The Odin, the Odin is comfortable, but a lot of people would probably have an issue with the weight. Uh, power, they both need about the same amount of power, about the same amount of amp. The Odin has a lower impedance but the Atrium is, has a higher sensitivity or efficiency, so it works out. They both need about the same amount of power to create the same volume level. Uh, overall, I love the Odin. This is one of my favorite headphones ever, but I probably give a slight advantage to the Atrium because of the better bass extension and just having a little more weight to the mid bass. Um, it's a slight advantage, but I guess of the two, I would probably pick the Atrium for that reason, but they are very close. I do love this headphone. So now I'm going to go to the Kennerton Ragnar. Okay, this is the Kennerton Ragnar, which is a closed back. But the reason I'm using this and, you know, um, I'm limited on how many headphones I have laying around at any given time. Uh, these are still on loan to me from Kennerton. This is a closed back and this is a planar magnetic driver. And these do have a higher price. These sell for about $3,800. So this is about $1,300 more than the Atrium. 
Um, and I did want to mention that this also came with three sets of pads and the set of pads that I settled on and used during this comparison are the Rogner Dynamic. They are a tapered non-perforated pad and um, this is the gives it the most base of the three different pads I tried and it's kind of a toss-up sometimes I like the stock pads but sometimes I like these it gives it more base and a little warmer so anyway for the comparison I'm using the dynamic tapered non perforated pads on this which are uh, memory foam and I'm using the universal pads that are the stock pads on the uh, atrium so anyway getting into my comparison sub base the Ragnar goes deeper, and that's with these pads. It goes deeper, it has more weight to the sub-base, and it has better control. But that's not saying anything bad about the Atrium. The Atrium has excellent sub-base, but the Ragnar Planer, in my opinion, has the best sub-base of any headphone I've ever heard by a long way. No other headphone has even been close. This headphone has exceptional sub bass. So saying that it's better than the Atrium is not taking away anything from the Atrium. The Atrium still has excellent sub bass. Mid bass. Once again, the Ragnar has more weight and um, it's tighter, better controlled, and it's uh, more dynamic, has more punch to it. But I've got to say that the Ragnar is a closed back headphone and closed back headphones tend to have more bass than open backs and the fact that the Atrium is an open back and has the amount and quality of bass it does have is outstanding. The Atrium actually has the best bass of any open back headphone I've heard so far. Um, the Hi-Fi Man Aria Stealth is close, but I would give it to the Atrium. Um, where am I at? Mids. Um, the Atrium actually has warmer, richer mids than the um, Ragnar does, so I'm going to give that one to the Atrium. I love the mids in the Ragnar, but the atrium just has absolutely beautiful mids just so warm and beautiful and uh, female vocals sound great with this headphone but they sound i'm giving the edge to the atrium in that respect also um, treble they're both pretty close in extension and brightness uh, both clean crisp both have good sparkle Neither ever sounds harsh or sibilant, so kind of a tie as far as treble. Um, detail. The Ragnar has more detail. The Ragnar is one of the most detailed headphones I have ever heard. The Atrium is very good in detail, but the Ragnar is even a little bit better. Um, soundstage. This is a closed back, which restricts the soundstage a little bit. Um, for a closed back, the Ragnar has an exceptionally wide soundstage and real good depth. The Atrium has even more width and even more depth, so soundstage is going to go to the Atrium. Uh, imaging, the Atrium has very good imaging, but the Ragnar is the most precise, most pinpoint as far as imaging of any headphone I've heard so far. So that one goes to the Ragnar. Uh, dynamics, the Ragnar is more dynamic, has more punch, but that can lead to fatigue listening to it for a long time, especially if songs are bass heavy. It can get a little overwhelming at times. Uh, forgiveness, the Atrium is more forgiving of uh, uh, less than perfect recordings. The Ragnar is super detailed and has a little bit um, cooler, drier mid-range and it will point out, um, bring to your attention flaws in the recording. So the Atrium is more forgiving. Isolation, as far as keeping outside noise out and inside music in, 
definitely goes to Ragnar. It's a closed back, has very good isolation. The atrium being an open back is just like every other open back, has almost no isolation. Comfort. The Ragnar is lighter, but they are both very, very comfortable, in my opinion. Um, so, comes down to, this is wrapping up my video, do I recommend the Atrium? And the answer is an absolute yes. I love this headphone. It might not be, it might not stand out in any certain way. I mean, there might not be any one feature or aspect of the sound that really jumps out, but it is just such a well-balanced combination with no real weaknesses at all. This, you know, every headphone has some weakness. It has its strong points. This headphone has probably the least weaknesses of any headphone I've ever heard. Um, yeah, I mean, the Ragnar is an exceptional headphone. I've had it for, I don't know, three, four months now. And probably it's my go-to headphone. I love that headphone. But it is, like I said, about $1,300 more expensive. Would I trade... If I had to pick, if I had to pick this or the Ragnar, I would probably pick the Ragnar. But, um, like I said, it's a more expensive headphone. This is one, the Ragnar is the best headphone I've ever heard. This is very close. This is, without a doubt, one of the best headphones I've ever heard. It has no substantial weaknesses. And it's just so well balanced and it just makes everything sound good. I cannot find any music. I mean, even stuff that's poorly recorded sounds good on this headphone. It's very forgiving. It's one of those headphones you're going to want to listen to every piece of music you have. Where some headphones, especially um, super detailed, very analytical headphones, you're, you're going to end up listening to your 10 best recordings over and over and over and you're going to leave everything else on the shelf where this headphone you're going to want to listen to everything you have so yes i very highly recommend this headphone zmf and zach really figured this out really knew what they were doing uh the Verite Open had um, sort of a weird sound stage. Once I got used to it, I really liked it. But this headphone, that is really this headphone's strong point. This thing has an outstanding sound stage, really wide, very good depth. It sounds very natural and everything. That's the thing about this headphone. It just sounds natural. It sounds real. It sounds organic. It makes instruments and voices sound the way they should sound. And I'll be honest with you, this headphone is addictive. I want to listen to it as much as I can. And this um, obviously was on loan to me. And this will be one of the hardest headphones, probably the hardest to return ever. The Verite Open. Um, that was loaned to me. I had to return it after a couple months, and that was a hard one to send back. This will be even harder. This is, I mean, if I had to pick one headphone to live with the rest of my life, um, this would definitely be on my short list. This would be one of the very few I would pick between, and I could very easily live with this headphone for the rest of my life. And um, it's just that good. It is a really good headphone and there's nothing about it that you're going to feel like you came up short. There's no, you know, like say the, the Aria Stealth. Outstanding sound, but I just, I struggle a little bit with that narrow sound stage. If that had this wide sound stage like the earlier models, it'd be almost the perfect headphone, but I struggle a little bit. And I mean, yeah, you do get used to it. You um, listen to it for a while and it sounds right. But then if I like go from that to this and the sound stage with just doubles and it, it just sounds so much more open, um, you know, that it's, 
you feel like you, you were missing something. And with this headphone, you're not missing anything. I mean, yeah, it's not hyper detailed, but it's detailed to a realistic point that it makes music enjoyable without sounding analytical, without, you know, it just, it's, it's, the word musicality, a lot of people throw that around, but that, um, it's just a really good word to describe the way this headphone sounds. It's just very musical, makes music sound the way I believe it was intended to sound. So yes, I highly recommend this headphone. And um, I guess I need to wrap this up. This may be the longest video I ever made. So I, I did it in, what, four or five parts? So anyway, sorry for taking up so much of your time. But like I said, if I was going to spend $25 or $2,700 on a headphone, um, I would want to know as much detail about it as I could. So that is what I've tried to give to you. So... Uh, I want to thank you for watching my video. Uh, if this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You're all welcome to join us at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. We're up to about, I think, uh, 16.7 thousand members. Still growing. I think we're growing about 15 members a day. And um, once again, I just want to say thanks for watching my video.